This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on the sponsor later part of this video. So the speakers behind me are the Tekton Pendragon 2 ohm version speakers. And these speakers are perhaps the best value in hi-fi I have ever heard to date, including the Kalish Model 5s, including the Kalish Candles, including the Bacardas 400 Mark IIs, the list goes on. These are a serious value that triumphs every single one of those speakers that I just said. And that's something to be said already right there. Because I said great things about all those speakers. But there is always a catch. And the fact is that these are two ohm speakers. So in this video, let's talk about why in the world are they two ohm speakers? What the hell was Tekton thinking? And we'll talk about the sound quality, the build quality, and as well as some of the gear matching as well, which will be short. And also placement to make it sound the best as possible. And of course, I'll throw in some comparisons here and there throughout the video so that you understand where I'm coming from. So I had to ask Eric what he was thinking when designing a 2 ohm speaker, right? And his reply was very simple. He said, well, amplifiers can do it now. Back in the day, it was true, amplifiers would blow up, they would not be able to drive or be stable at 2 ohms. But a lot of amplifiers, in fact, a lot of Class D amplifiers, most Class D amplifiers these days can be stable in 2 ohms. And in fact, a lot of amplifiers these days do have a 2 ohm rating. So he said, why not? Why not make the amplifier work harder, drawing more current from those amplifiers to the speakers and making that sound possible? Now, if I scared you there about blowing up amplifiers, don't be alarmed. As long as your amplifier has a 2 ohm rating, you're good. But this speaker is also good with the impedance curve, meaning it doesn't dip below 2 ohms. As Eric stated to me, the lowest impedance on the speaker is 2.3 ohms and the highest is 2.8 ohms. It stays under 3 and it stays above 2. Now if that all sounds gibberish to you, don't worry, I got you. So most speakers are 4 ohms or 8 ohms as you saw before. That does not mean that it's 4 ohms or 8 ohms impedance all across the frequency. Depending on the frequency and depending on what you're playing, the impedance may actually drop below 3 ohms or even 2 ohms on certain speakers. So this means that the impedance curve is never a flat curve. It's just like a frequency graph, it will deviate from 4 ohms to 16 ohms, 32 ohms, you know, 2 ohms, depending on what frequency you're at. This speaker is actually pretty flat, lowest being 2.3 ohms again and the highest being 2.8 ohms. So that means that your amplifier is actually pretty stable because it's seeing similar impedances all across the board. So hopefully I didn't confuse you too much there. But just know that these speakers draw the maximum capability of your speakers within the safe range. When I first set these up, I was in disbelief. The bass that these speakers create down into the low frequency must be hitting at least 25 hertz in my room. As I felt the extension, shake the foundation of my room and my boom poles, the microphone stands, all shaking and my friend Tujin and myself was just in disbelief, laughing our heads off. These speakers by far is the lowest extending Tekton speaker we had in here. Yes, we have had other speakers that does extend this low, but the difference here is that this speaker moves so much air just due to the sheer size of the woofers as well as the speaker itself. Now usually I don't start the video talking about tone or how natural the speaker sounds, that's towards the sound section, but before we get there, I wanted to say that these are possibly one of my favorite speakers in terms of tone and how realistic it is. And Tekton speakers have been known to have that realistic sound and realistic tone as Eric himself as a drum player, and especially when it comes to guitar and drums, it sounds really, really natural. But I found these speakers to be more natural than even other Tekton speakers I've heard, coming very close to the real thing. In fact, I recorded a little voice here for you to listen to, so you tell me which one is my voice directly, original recording, versus recorded out of the speakers, while I introduce you to the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. I used to run and manage three websites for three different businesses, one of them being a hi-fi store, and guess what? They all used Squarespace. 
I asked those businesses what they liked about Squarespace and it mainly came down to three main points. Number one, they really liked the custom templates. Squarespace has one of the most diverse custom templates to fit any business model. This means less money and money spent on creating a website from scratch. Number two, they said it was easy to use. Squarespace is intuitive and easy to use for someone with little to no experience building a website and managing it. Number three, they said it makes selling easy. These days, it's all about e-commerce and standing out and Squarespace makes selling online easy for both the customer and the business owner with email campaigns, SEO tools, and analytics. So if you're interested, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready, go to squarespace.com slash jiyagi to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, if you guessed A as the Tecton and B as the origin recording, you were absolutely right. Hope you didn't cheat there. Now, considering that the origin recording was in a soundproof room with the microphone fairly close to my mouth and the other one through the Tecton right here in this listening room, there is some reverb because it's being recorded out of a speaker at one meter. But in my personal opinion, uh, I found the voice, the recording out of the Tectons to have a little bit more bass added to my voice. And uh, hopefully I know my own voice. So that's what I heard. And I found that there was more texture and I like that. And in fact, the original recording had a little bit of sibilance brightness to it that was tamed through the tectons. And of course, again, there was a little bit of reverb, a little bit of natural uh, space when recorded out in this room. So I found that to be interesting. Again, very close match, uh, considering that it was recorded again in the listening room versus a voice booth. So the placement with these speakers, since these are back ported, two of them, two, two ports in the back, pretty big ones, um, and this is a pretty big speaker. So in, in itself, it's taking up quite a bit of real estate, uh, but you do need some space from the wall behind it because without it, it will, it will kind of overload the room because of how much space the speaker has. But with that being said, I didn't find it that it needed too much room. Um, here, I'm, use, I'm about what, like three feet, would you say? Sounds about right. Yeah, about three feet. Uh, that's how much I have it out, and that was like throughout the review process, really, found it to be a sweet spot. Um, in fact, when I had it too far out, which is the red mark right there, that's usually how where I put like, you know, big speakers like these. Um, I found the bass to extend low, but I wanted a little bit more oomph, especially into that mid-range, right? So I had it a little bit closer, and this is where I liked it. So, I mean, it's okay, but at the same time, you have to understand that this, this is also quite a bit, you know? So like in total, you need, you need space for these speakers. So in terms of toe-in, um, I did have these speakers just hitting my shoulders, um, outside of my shoulders. So I didn't have too much toe-in, and I like that because it gave me a good balance between sound staging and imaging. You can toe it in more if you want more crisp, you know, highs and more detail. But I found that, you know, having a little bit of toe in is where it's at. Uh, I was using isoacoustic feet because these do have tremendous amount of bass and it did definitely help out with the bass region using these feet. I'll link it in the description below. These actually do make a difference and they're scientifically proven to make a difference. So it's not just gimmicks. Uh, but yeah, overall, not too hard to set up, but definitely need a space. Now to give you a reference in size, these speakers are the biggest speakers out of all the speakers that are currently in here. That includes the gigantic POC R700 speakers that I just reviewed. These are bigger than those by quite a bit. And that's no surprise, Tecton speakers are quite big in size. You get a lot of speaker for the money. And talking about the price point, this starts at 2,200 US dollars, which is one hell of a bargain. Now that does come with a downside as to make a cabinet this big, the finish on the speaker is not the best, but Tecton does offer many different finishes and many different paints that can match your decor and your living settings. Like I said, you're getting a lot of speakers for the money. And talking about a lot of drivers, that's not just figure of speech. You actually get five tweeters on this Pendragon. Usual Pendragons have three tweeters, this has five. And the middle one is the one that is playing the high frequency, the rest are playing the mid frequency. And the drivers for the bass being used is pro audio drivers used usually in guitar amplifiers and now it's being used here and slightly modified for Tecton speakers. 
And if you haven't seen Tecton speakers before, you may be thinking that is a lot of tweeters, and you are absolutely right. That is a lot of tweeters on a single speaker. But as I previously mentioned in this video, as well as other Tecton videos, the middle tweeter is the one that is only playing the high frequency, and the rest are playing mid-range frequencies. And one of the misconceptions and what scares people about Tecton speakers is the fact that it has so many tweeters and possibility of comb filtering. Well, in this case, that is not really a possibility as these drivers are playing different frequencies. Comb filtering really only happens when you have two drivers playing the same frequencies, canceling each other out. So it really doesn't happen on Tecton speakers. I don't personally hear comb filtering on these speakers. And in fact, not these speakers, but I've sent some Tecton speakers to the NRC to get it measured, and I wasn't reported of any comb filtering effect. That would be a concern. Some critics out there will be very quick to point out the fact that you don't need these many tweeters on a speaker. And while they're absolutely correct that they don't need so many tweeters on a speaker, it is out of box thinking from Eric, as his thinking, and he does have a patent on this, is the fact that low mass drivers, such as a tweeter that is lower in weight and can move much faster than a mid-range woofer that is heavier, can produce delicate highs and mid-ranges that is more detailed, nuanced, and at the same time, fast. But for those of you that are against the speaker's looks because of the tweeters, I have no doubts there. The tweeters can be pretty ugly to some. But for some, it may be a unique look. And it certainly is one of a kind with so many tweeters that's not a line array design. Now these speakers are quite interesting in how they project because of the tweeter design. Because it's by small tweeters that's moving rapidly, it somewhat creates a horn effect. And I'm not talking about a horn effect where it's honky like this, but it's able to be efficient and it's able to move quickly in the air, allowing the high frequency and mid range to be clear, crisp, and clear sounding without that typical horn projection that may be shrill or honky to some ears. So I've had people who were fans of horn speakers that loved Tecton speakers, and I've also had people in here that were not fan of horn designs whatsoever and loved Tecton speakers because of that clear crispness and being able to project in such a 3D fashion, it does create a very big scale sound with that clear crisp sound in the top frequency. And one of the speakers that was famous for this was the double impact speakers from Tecton. This was a hallmark. And in fact, it was one of the favorites of many reviewers calling it literally a giant killer. And literally it was one of the top speakers in my list of having that high frequency refinement and finesse and attack and decay factor and one of the highest marks given to a speaker at any point in time on this entire channel. However, I will have to say that the king has just been triumphed by its own kind, these speakers. And it's no joke that the high frequency on this speaker will cannibalize the double impacts whether Tecton likes it or not as anyone who hears these speakers will be surely, surely amazed of the high frequency refinement. Not only is it crisp, clear, and the decay and the snap on the high frequency is just, just remarkable, it's better than the double impacts. Now these speakers sound stage much like a horn design, which means that it has a 3D imaging and it surrounds you and envelops you but at the same time, imaging is nothing like a horn design. I often find myself finding the horn speakers to not image as well as a point source or other designs in comparison. But because these speakers are technically not a horn design, it has a very pinpoint imaging and especially when you pair it up with something like a Luxman that is really high end and is able to deliver that power and finesse, the high frequency imaging is just spectacular. I was able to draw out literally where the instruments are, where the singer is, and it was almost like I was there. And in terms of tone, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, and in that AB of the Squarespace ad, I found the tone to be very natural sounding, having a little bit of that bass emphasis in the vocals that was being transferred from the lower end uh, you know, sound, and the high frequency, again, sparkling, snappy, pronounced, and with edge, to where it's not fatiguing, but there is definitely uh, definition to the vocals as well as instruments and strings to have that finesse and especially with rock and roll you want that kind of finesse. I was actually rocking out to Nirvana, Unplugged album, 
must listen if you haven't. Great, great sound out of these. I was just, I was just having a great time. In fact, I feel like Tecton is a little bit shooting themselves in the foot here. But at the same time, I think they're smart about it because this is a 2 ohm speaker. There are specific requirements to make the speaker sing. Like having a proper amplifier that can do 2 ohms. And yes, yes, these speakers will definitely scale with a better amplifier. The higher you go, the more these speakers will give you. Now I've paired it with the Apollo from Denifrist because I trust this amplifier is a beast. It's like 100 pounds and it's able to drive these speakers. Now with the Denifrist Apollo that I've been using as a reference for a while, these speakers sang like no tomorrow. The high frequency was smooth, but there was still a little bit to be desired in the high frequency refinement area. It wasn't quite there like the double impacts were. It was about a little bit more refinement than the original Pendragons. The bass was not surprising whatsoever. The bass was deep, visceral, textured. So I had to go out and buy something high end to pair and really make these speakers shine because I wanted to hear the full potential of these speakers. So Crazy Me went out and bought the Luxman M900U. Now this is a discontinued model, but I don't know why they discontinued it because it's one of the best amplifiers that Luxman has produced in my opinion. It's a solid state amplifier that is stable down to 2 ohms and has a peak power of 1200 watts at 2 ohms. So it is definitely able to drive these speakers at a very stable rate and that's why I got it. And hooking up to a Luxman that was a flagship of its time and it was about $19,000 US originally, these now sang. It was enough power to drive these speakers really loud, had all the dynamics, but most importantly, it made me absolutely speechless. Because not only was the bass more textured, nuanced, and the decay and the stop, it was almost like an open baffle design. Like I said, the, the bass was just incredible. But not only that, the mid-range and high frequency refinement was taken to the next level above the double impact design. In fact, that's why I say I think Tecton is smart because while these speakers can perform better than the double impacts in my opinion, it will take a lot for that to happen because you have to find the right amplifier with a 2 ohm rating that is quality enough to have that high frequency refinement and snappiness. So it does have its caveats, it does have its requirements. The scale of sound from a big speaker, like I said in the Poke R700 review, is very different. These speakers move a lot of air and it's something that cannot be experienced with a small speaker. Even speakers like the Bocard S400 Mark II, that's a bookshelf speaker that has a floor standing experience, it will not be effortless as this speaker or have the air dip displacement as a speaker like this. Sometimes there is no replacement for displacement and that is just the way it is. It was not only the pressurization or the impact of the speaker that surprised me in the low frequency region, but also the texture, the nuance of the bass region that was above and beyond even the Pokar 700 or even the high end speakers like Wilson Audio that I heard in the past. The texture on the bass on these speakers, dare I say, is in my opinion better than even Wilson Audio or Focal or Magico that I've heard in the past. Now it does have a little bit of boxiness to it, but that boxiness adds to the timber of the bass. It does decay very quickly and it does not linger in the room. And this is not a big room, it's a mid-sized room and while these speakers fit, I can see that these speakers will do much better in a much larger room as it has really good decay factor. And what I mean by that is that when the bass driver hits, right, and you hear boom in the low frequency, it sometimes it lingers in the room and it kind of has that echoey effect. It doesn't do that. It has a very quick decay factor, much like an open baffle subwoofer design. And there I say, again, these speakers absolutely do not need a subwoofer unless you want to play pipe organ down in the low 220 hertz frequencies, then you may need a subwoofer. But other than that, these speakers play all the spectrum and it's a pretty much a full range speaker. So with that being said, that pretty much concludes this video. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, please do leave a like on this video. It does help my channel out and it doesn't cost you anything. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.